Hi, I'm Lou Scott, and this is the Geppetto Room, where you don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you, because here we're going to explore and explain techniques, methodologies, help to help you make better decisions, transformative decisions, the kind of decisions that will enrich the way you live, the way you work, and the way you play in our state. Now today, I have two what I think are extraordinary guests. They're proactive, but I think they're transformative. They're Al Wakefield and they're Bob Harnish. These two gentlemen have been the pioneers of an initiative called the Declaration of, in, in, of Inclusion. Now you've heard of that, right? The Declaration of Inclusion. It's been around a while and they've been, they've been working on it for many, many years. And what the whole kind of regular purpose, and we'll find out more about the purpose, but what I believe it is, is that they're trying to make the state, help the state be a welcoming place, a place of equality, a place of diversity, a place of inclusion. Because if we're not a state like that, we're not going to succeed. We're not going to solve what I think is a major population problem, is the population crisis. So that's what they're kind of doing. We're going to, they've been here before. They're going to go over where, the, where this, the initiative is right now and what we can help and how, what's going on with it. And I want to know about it too. Now, right now, I, want to, I would like to have, what, what is the status of the current thing? It's been going on. A lot of towns are involved. It's very important. So without further ado, let's meet the two individuals who are pioneers and might think are the most important, one of the most important initiatives that we have, the inclusion initiative. Bob, how are you, Al? How you doing? Good morning, I haven't seen Lou. you since the big snows and so forth. I hope your winter was well and good. You look good and so forth. Still here. <laughs> I have some questions, and I'd like to start off with this question. Okay, maybe Al wants to answer this. Just tell us briefly to remind everybody what, what is the purpose, what is the mission of the, of the Declaration of Inclusion? Why well, we'll let Bob, Bob handle okay. it, okay, if you don't mind. Maybe we ought to read the declaration. Have, do, do, you, do you suspect that the audience is aware? No, I just want aware? to get your feeling of what okay. you believe it is. Okay. Well, why, why, right. Well, really the question might be is why yeah. do you think it's important? Yeah. Okay. Well, it, it's a statement we're asking towns to adopt as the first step in encouraging their residents to be more inclusive and to be more uh, welcoming uh, of new people into the town, pe people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds, different religions. Because a town where people feel welcome is a town where there'll, there'll be more volunteerism, more, in, more participation in town events. And uh, let's face it, uh, when people feel included and useful, they're more willing to pay their taxes and, their, and do their fair share. And they come with solutions because they come from different backgrounds. They come from innovation, and that's where solution, we need innovative solution. We, can, we have to stop, stop try, trying to solve problems, new problems with old ideas. Yep. So your initiative helps that, brings people involved, welcoming. We believe it does. So population, well, that's what I believe it is, Sophie. So, so that's what you've been doing. You go to now. I know that you just described briefly What's the procedure? How do you get to the town? When you go to the town, what happens? Or right. Uh, we first contact the town, uh, perhaps uh, the town clerk very often, sometimes the chair of the select board, and ask for uh, a, uh, uh, a date when we could be on their agenda of a regular uh, select board yeah. meeting. And then we... Um, uh, two of us would, uh, will appear at the meeting, and we do it via Zoom, ideally. Are you doing it Zoom now? Yes. Because, because it's more convenient for everybody? Well, it, we just, we're, we're making so many presentations. We've probably made over, I don't know what, 200 presentations by now mm -hmm. at two, two, two town select boards. And we just cannot drive all over the state to do uh -huh. that. And so uh, Zoom has been a huge uh, plus for us in uh, in you in, find it more effective than personal. Well, uh, <laughs> probably yeah. not. Yeah, but, me too. Yeah. But uh, it it does seem to work. Yeah. And I think people are getting more used to it as well. How many yeah. towns already have signed? I th uh, 
142. 142. Yeah. Out of what? Representing over, out of 247, representing over over 75 percent of the population uh, yeah. in Vermont. So yeah. yeah, significant. Yeah. So you know, you make the presentation by Zoom. Yeah. Okay. You hope that everybody's there. And then, and then, then we stand by for a dis for discussion. We hope there's discussion amongst the select board members and perhaps people in the audience. Uh, people from the public who attend these meetings. And we're there to answer questions. Uh, and, uh, and then we, we hope that one of the select board members will make a motion to adopt and that there'll be a, 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 an affirmative vote. Okay, so they adopt, they sign the Declaration of, of Inclusion. They do. Okay, so that, that's the procedure you use. We heard it before, the people know that, so it's, it's great. And I know obviously there's other things about it, about obstacles, and. I'll talk about that later. Let me ask this question. What, after you do that and they sign, they sign, what, how do they implement? How do you implement inclusion, diversity? What are you, what are you supposed to do? Well, you're right. Inclusion? I mean, it's, it's kind of a squishy subject. And yeah, it's so, so squishy. And, and so, yes, well, the, we, we have a guide to implementation our, our, on our website, vtdeclarationofinclusion.com. Org. Oh, you, have a, you give them suggestions? And we give them suggestions on what they might do. And there are some simple things they could do, uh, such as put the declaration on their website, on the town website. And, uh, you know, and ideally, along with that statement of the declaration, there should be perhaps the rationale for, the, for why the town adopted it, so, so the public understands why. Uh, and it could be framed and hung in the town office, for example. It could be framed and hung at yeah. the library and at the fire station. That's one of the ideas of implementation. Yeah. What are some of the other ideas? Let people know. Uh, well, the, the, town, the select board could form a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee ah. to, to guide the town in how best to implement. Uh, and there are... You know, we, we, like, we think, for example, that the schools ought to be engaged, that uh, the, 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 the faith institutions should be... That's a good idea to create a leadership organization that, pro, that is proactive in the, in the, in the, in the decoration. Yes. Does it happen? Do they do it? It's, it is happening. So there are really two steps. One is to get the town to, uh, to adopt the declaration. The second is to get the town to implement. And now we're moving into the implementation stage. But the idea that you want to originally say you could create a committee that has to drive the leadership, or, you know, to, to do it, to get it done. Yeah. Is that working in the states? In oh, the it various is. Towns? It, it is. Uh, but it's, it, but it, it's taking time. And, and, uh, and some towns, uh, you know, don't, don't want to, some select boards don't want a committee telling them what to do. So, or, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. Call it a team. Yeah, we, we, just, we, yeah, we don't want it to be just words on paper. We want it yeah. to, to really take hold in the community yeah. and in the state as a whole. Yeah. Some communities are, are more aggressive or more assertive than others, Lou. Uh, you what know, we do? went to Montpelier as an example. Montpelier already had the committee that, that Bob talked about. Bethel, a really small town, uh, uh, not too far from here, in fact, had already uh, put together uh, a, a committee that was working on it. Glover came to us directly and said, we've already implemented the Declaration of Inclusion and we're working on it uh, and here are the kinds of things we're doing. So the things that Bob mentioned all the way yeah. from, you know, posting it on your so website. So Montpelier is one of the early, right in this capital, one of the early with the committees. What are, what are they doing to implement it? Uh, that's what we're in the, in the process of taking a look at that right now. Uh, it's really, you know, we've been in this in this initiative now for just over three years or so, uh, and there are only four of us working, or three of us for the for the two thirds of that time. Um, and so uh, we're right now, in fact, surveying uh, the top forty towns that uh, adopted to see what they're doing and we're starting to receive replies back. It's a formal survey to find out exactly what they are doing to implement. That was going to be my next question. What phase are you in? You're, you're beyond 
didn't necessarily do initially the presentations, although you might still do them. But what, what are the new phases? What do you really expect in this phase? What's the objective of this phase? Well, we've got, it. We've, you know, we've, we've got 142 towns now that have adopted, which means we've got 100 and 107 uh, to go. go. Yeah, and while it sounds like this is easy work, it isn't. Uh, you can spend hours on the phone with one, with one town manager, a town administrator, town clerk, or a head of the select board. And so there's a lot of follow-up. You know, you, you're a oh, sales yeah. guy. You sell stuff. You know how long it takes to do yeah. the deal. Well, this is, this is doing the deal, if you will. And so you can spend an inordinate amount. These 142 towns that have adopted, we spend hours and hours talking imagine. to them I on the phone imagine. and meeting with the select board and, uh, and, and, and all that. So... Uh, we're now moving towards smaller towns uh, uh, because we started with the larger towns with the bigger populations working to smaller towns. We're, the last 105 or whatever that number is, these are towns that in many instances, I, I talked to somebody last week uh, that had 80 people in it. Uh, you know, so you're talking 80, 200, 300, 400, 500, uh, and they take as much time. And in fact, in some instances, more time than, than the larger towns take. Yeah. So the idea that you, you're, still, you're still making presentations. But I'm more interested in like, people like Montpelier, states, yeah. areas like Montpelier, other states, who are, are implementing, feel very confident. Mm -hmm. They have a committee or a team that's implementing. So, you know, what, what, give me some examples of you do. I know what they're actually doing. Are they posting signs or on, on the, you, I mean, are they having events? Sure. I mean, what are they doing to increase population? I mean, what are they doing to how people understand that diversity, equality, what it really means? It ranges, it, it ranges from a town like Putney, which has a welcoming sign uh, right as you enter, the, at least they did, yeah. as you enter Putney. In the town office there, they have the Declaration of Inclusion posted. When we went to... Uh, to talk to Mike here in town, here in Rutland. Mike immediately took the plaque and put it on the door. That was Norm and I, Norm Cohen is one of our, our, our members. Uh, and I went and he immediately put on the door. Uh, the town of Menden, where I'm from, uh, has it in the office uh, as well. So those are, those are simple things that are to be done. But it, it, to answer, answer you in a comprehensive kind of way, we can't do that right now because we just, the survey literally just went out what, four weeks ago, Bob? Mm -hmm. Oh, you did a survey? Four weeks. Yeah, we just, yeah, we're doing a survey. Among the towns who were already signed? The, yeah. Among the first yeah. 40, the first 40 ah. out of the 142, yeah. the first 40 we've gone to. You said the survey. Because you want to give them some time to implement. Right. And yeah. the first 40 implemented in the first, uh, first year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. What was some of the questions? What are you asking for? What is the survey? What's the objective of the survey? What do you want to, to really find out? You just sent us to 40, 40 yeah. out of 100 or something. Yeah. Yeah. For basi example. Basically, we're asking, have they begun the process of implementation? And if so, what, are, what have they done? And what are they planning to do? And, and how are they going about it? That's basically. And we give, a, we give them a list. We kind of go back through the, what's, on the, what's on the website, and in fact, in terms of things that they've said. They, and so that's, that's exactly they check right. check it off. That's check the it off, way. boom, it's yes, no, yes, and any right. comments they make want to make. Make it easy for them. Yeah. Yeah. So you just send it out. Exactly. Yeah. You just send it out. Yeah, we just sent it out four weeks ago. For 40, yeah. so you're yeah. going to look at that 40, then you're going to look at, you know. We didn't want to be overwhelmed by the response that we get from the town. That should so. be your problem. Uh, yeah, you're I mean, I mean, right. overwhelmed. <laughs> you know, that should be your problem. Patty Lancaster. Uh, so how who's long a, you I don't out? know if you know Patty or not. Patty Lancaster, she's a retired attorney no, uh, in town. She's so. working with our group, and she's the person who's spearheading the implementation phase. So did you get how many? So it's been out four weeks? Four weeks. You know, sometimes when you send surveys like that to people, it requires a little follow-up reminder. Do you, by, the, by the way, did you get that? By the way, we did you do have that? that There's a lot of breakage yep. when you send things out. Yeah. You send yeah. by email? Uh, no, went in a formal mailing. Ah. Formed with a self-addressed envelope. Ah. Ah. Ah, oh, that's good direct mail. But, yeah. yeah. So how, how many have you gotten back? Four weeks? In what, four or five now? Yeah, four I, or five, I, not very many. To your point, uh, they're you not have sitting to follow, around. You've got to follow. You've got to follow. There's yeah, always sure. a lot of breakage. People are not paying attention to it. Exactly. They have good, they have good intentions, but it mm. never happens. Without that follow-up, nothing's going to happen. No, we, we, we built that in the yeah. plan. There's a follow-up, and then there's yeah. a follow-up so, to the follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in, a, in the yeah. few that you got back, anything outstanding, anything kind of, sort of like you could share with other towns to do? 
at this point? I no, got no, five not six. really. It's it's kind of the simple stuff that they've done. They put they put a you know thing in the, in the window or in the door kind of thing. Uh, they've they've talked about it in meetings to some extent, but nothing. In, I'd, I'd rather wait until we get some more uh, information back to even make any kind of assumptions <coughs> or presumptions about what. The, and then what based the on that yield. survey, you're going to mm -hmm. take some ex action, whatever the action is, and or take the ideas and use the ideas. We'll start by giving some feedback to everybody, to all the towns, and I think to implore the towns that have not adopted already to, to adopt and to those towns that uh, have adopted, to, they know what the other towns are doing. And we haven't figured That's out. That's important. I'm sorry. Yeah, very, very important. Sharing yeah. whatever the good stuff is happening, not that the bad stuff, but yeah. sharing the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully yeah. this whole thing is motivational. One town looks at another town. You know, it's, if, if you look at where, mm -hmm. where the major number of the largest number of adopters are, it's in Rutland County, which is interesting because that's where we are. Uh, and Windsor County, which is not too, not too far from here. The worst is up in Northeast Kingdom as such. And so far away. In, in, terms of, in terms of adoptions thus far. Maybe and, that, that here you're known and up there you're not known. I don't know that we know the answer. To that. <laughs> I don't know. Bob here is well known, but Chittenden, no one, Chittenden yeah. County is very strong. Yeah, uh, Chittenden County is very yeah. strong as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I don't want to place any blame in it, but I, I found because I'm a, just I'm believing more that we need population. We need a diverse population, mm -hmm. but there are pockets, pockets of uh, who are against that. Pockets all over the state who really don't want, don't see the advantage of bringing more people. They think we could solve our problems with our current people. That's mm -hmm. descending. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I was always amazed at a, a, a statistic. There are more people that die, that die in Vermont, than are born here. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't know that, that new So that. if you use the math, if mm -hmm. you got all young people leaving, and everybody else is dying. You can wake up one morning, come to the Vermont, there's nobody here. It sounds ridiculous. But, the, but those pockets of white reluctance to this kind of yeah. thing, because there's a, uh, and, and part of that is racial, let's face it. Part right. of that is racism. Okay. Well, anyway. Al, you can, you can speak to the Vermont Futures findings. Uh, yeah, there's yes. a, yeah uh, Kevin? We've, we've gotten to yes. a great extent uh, where we are with this because of partners like the Vermont Chamber of Commerce, Vermont uh, uh, League of Cities and Towns, Vermont uh, Council on Rural Development. Uh, but the Chamber has been particularly uh, helpful because they initially suggested uh, a website and when we told them we didn't have one, they said we're going to do the website. So right. they maintain the website uh, for us. They have a component, and I think you're familiar with, called Vermont Futures, that's done this demographic study, which shows that those cities, those towns, that in fact are the most inclusive in Vermont are the ones that have grown the fastest. That's uh, a good so fact. there's some real hard data to support. That's, yeah. This isn't just fluff. It's a nice thing to do. Kevin it's true? the right thing to do. Kevin's? But economically, oh, yeah. yes, yeah, it's, it's Kevin. Yeah, gonna, uh, Kevin I think I have a Christie show with him coming up. Kevin Lou. Yeah. Um, how about De how about Devin Neary? There was Neary De Devin's uh, organization. He's running a major uh, their progress, economic progress, whatever they, uh, they I'm call. I'm not sure who you're referring to. Mm, yeah, I'm uh, not. I, I, I'm not familiar with that name, but we, we should. Devin Neely? We should look into it. Near NEAR, what is he? Yeah. Yeah, he's heading an organization, I can't write, economic development. Mm -hmm. And they're doing a major survey. I'll give you the name. Okay, after. Yeah. They're doing a major mm -hmm. survey on mm -hmm. what are the most important aspects mm -hmm. of what do they want to see grown, growth in Rutland County and mm -hmm. so forth. What do they want to see? Oh yeah, is that through the uh, through the through the, uh, the Rutland uh, planning? Yes. The Rutland region planning. Yes, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I right. saw that. So I saw yeah, that they're survey. doing a yeah. major, a ma some mm -hmm. some data in there could probably help you. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Yeah, no, I suspect went. it'll support they, what we're doing. They were doing. They were doing part of the, the inquiry at the, the business show last night, mm -hmm. and what happened was that they had this chart, and you take a little little stickers and you put what you and obviously what comes up very high on all the. All the things we like to see change is the economic development. See that that's okay, all right. Mm -hmm. But they don't relate that, as I relate it, to population. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Well, the governor has talked, and, and now several years in a row, starting about two years, three years ago, he talked about the need for more people in the state. And as you're aware, the state has offered, uh, I think, as much as $10,000 yeah, for know new people to, that, to come yeah. here. I don't know whether they still do it or not, but this is by far a cheaper way and a, and a longer, I think, sustaining way of getting people into the state to bring jobs, uh, bring companies that, that, that hire people uh, so that the state survives economically. I'm glad you brought it up because actually the statistic is the last four or five governors, the last four or five governors, we, we identified, the state of Vermont identified population as a problem 25 years ago hmm. with their own research. You hear, they said to her, you have a demographic problem. Not much has been done. We still have a demographic problem, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and every governor stepped up and said, we have population, 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 but not much is done. It kind of gets rabbit holed. There's some people that do it. There's a lot of initiatives, but, but I, they're not approaching it like I believe it is, it's emergency. So that's what. So let me get, so we're on that point. What are some of the obstacles? We, you know, I, I, I know it's rhetorical, but what are some of the obstacles deep inside you, you know? Well, other than pockets of people who don't want you want, they don't want to hear about this. That's, that's there, unfortunate, there but it exists. There are certainly those people out there. Who, yeah, they're up there. They're, who, not, they're not, they're not all in the Northeast Kingdom, yeah. but they're around. Right. They're around. They, they, <laughs> they, like, they like their town just the way it that's is. That's right, that's they, right. They say there's no racism in our town, but of course, really the only people who know about racism are people who are the object of it. Or yeah, the and they're not there yeah, it, to it, tell anybody. It's not them, right. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, so we're not we're not accusing a town of uh, no. of racism. We're just saying you know let's let's be more welcoming. Perhaps uh, the biggest obstacle right now is, is just that we talked about the Zoom capability with just with four of us trying to do this, getting to other parts the of the state. Of so people just, yeah, the, 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 yeah, yeah, the number of people that that are really actively doing this, getting in front of them. Uh, is, is, is an obstacle. And select boards are busy. I mean, uh, you know, I yeah. have to respect, they have increased but respect getting, now. But are, do. are we doing anything to create more volunteers for the effort of a decor the Declaration of Insight? No, Inclusion. not really. But the four of us, uh, now five of us, I think, is uh, that, that's sufficient. We've gotten, we've gotten to over 200 towns, as Bob said, and 142 have adopted. And so I don't think we need any more people. We just got to, we, we've set towards the end of uh, 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 June to, have made contact with and to be following up with all, all 240, uh, 247. Yeah. So we will have, have, t have spoken with them. We will know pretty much where each one of those towns stands and what the follow-up uh, needs to be to get them to adopt or to finally say, as some six or seven towns have said, no, we're not going to adopt, but we'll know where they are. That's the important yeah. thing so that we can continue to follow up uh, over time. Is the state helping as much? What can a state be doing more? I know they, they, had, they signed the declaration. He talked about it, you know, obviously, and Mount Pelia has an organization, mm -hmm. a committee. Is the state doing anything to help? Can it help? you have any suggestions for the state? Yeah, I have a great suggestion, which we've made each one of the three years. What the, is the, it? The, the governor signed the Declaration of Inclusion uh, for the state, right, and declared yeah. the second week in, in May, to his credit, over the last three years as Inclusion Week. That is a great, that is a great help. Some towns, in fact, have, have acted on that uh, with festivals and, you know, That's and that kind of thing. That's coming up now. They, That's coming okay. up in the next couple so of Are they planning anything? We don't. The state has not, in fact, itself done anything specifically other than issue uh, the proclamation and designated the are week. Are you reminding them? And to my, yes, we certainly are. And as I've said in, in several talks, if I'm the governor, and I'm saying we need people in this state, uh, and the only way the state is going to grow is to have more people and recognize that there are just not enough white people uh, around here to provide for uh, uh, economic growth, then we need to make sure that the rest of the country, yes, the rest of the world, knows that we are yeah. welcoming all the marginalized people that we identify in our Declaration of Inclusion. One so of the I'd be I've, saying that almost every time I got up in front of a group talking about economic well, development good, and growth. One of the things that, about event, one of the things I just read about the eclipse is that it, bring, it brings a, a, an energy. When people get together with one focus, there's an energy. There's yeah. a lot. There's a, you forget the differences and there's an energy that appreciates this natural wonder. That's what events do. So the idea of doing an event on the day 
of the day, it's very important because it brings people together, together and maybe more focused on what the, what we, what the decoration is all about. Without an event, it's just you know, mm. fairy tales. Mm. Mm -hmm. fairy tale. I'm hoping, I haven't heard anything about an event. Signage, nothing. You might get a couple of coverages. We're not. We're not sure. You know, since this has the proclamations have to be proclaimed every year, we're not in fact sure. We're very hopeful that the governor is going to come around for the fourth year in a row, but we've not heard yeah. officially that that in fact. But he's celebrating going to sign the welcoming, the decoration. celebrating yeah. that there's an effort going on in the state of Vermont, celebrating it mm -hmm. to to have diversity, to have equality, to have inclusion is something we should be saying. Every so. year. Yeah. Every you year. won't find any disagreement here. Yeah. As, <laughs> Al, as Al says. So the state, maybe the state, maybe the individual people could be doing more too. My next question is what, is, what can Vermonters do? What can a Vermonter do? Summarize, you know, what can a Vermonter do? Certainly a, a Vermonter who lives in a town that has not adopted can approach their select board or approach us to make to make a fresh attempt at, at that town. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Does the, you're, you have a site now, do you get hit? Do you get a lot of people inquiring? Do you, can you control? Are you aware of the hits? Do you have any, you know? Excellent question, Lou. Don't know. You should. Yeah. Even if you have to put a, a claimer in there, something mm -hmm. about, you got to put something, so you capture people who are interested. Mm -hmm. Might be volunteers, efforts, and so forth. You, you should be otherwise, Mm -hmm. I, I used to sell clients that way. If you have it, I would say to a client, if you have a website, really, it's like, website is like a store, okay? Do you have any hits? And they say, no, I don't get any hits. They say, well, your store is closed. It's like not <laughs> yeah. opening the door, saying it's closed, nobody's going to come. So what's the sense of having a store? It's, it may not be brick and mortar, but it's a store. If it's not opening, you're not doing enough. What we Maybe do know, what, what we do know is that organizations beyond cities and towns have come to us uh, about the ah. Declaration of Inclusion. So we do know that. We know that, in fact, in West Lebanon, there's a group over there that's working on uh, a Declaration of Inclusion for the state of New Hampshire, not for the state of New Hampshire, but for West Lebanon, yeah. New Hampshire. But we uh, know that the Queechee Golf Course has come to us. We know that the library in Reading has come to us. How about the all town the other Reading, big corporations in, fact, in the state? I'm sorry? How about all the bigger uh, corporations? Burton, uh, Burton has signed yes. the Declaration of Inclusion. Yeah. Uh, they have the know-how, they have the resources, sure. You get one or two of the major ones. I'd be going. I'd be making presentations to them because they got employees. Yeah, they got employees. And if you can get diversity in the corporations, in my own opinion, you're going to have innovation and so forth. Mm -hmm. We've been very practical about this, Lou. We're not. We're, we're not trying to solve all the problems in Vermont. We've been very focused on cities and towns, and that's where we're going to stay at least for phase one and phase two. We may. Uh, move beyond that but right now first things first we got to get this done okay. uh, we know where we are follow up with it as, 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 as Bob said earlier it's 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 fluff it's nothing if towns are just adopting and not doing and not doing anything about it so implementation is important this whole whole initiative means absolutely nothing if in fact towns don't begin to do something okay so well that's where we are Okay, we're reaching the end. Let me, let me summarize. I, read, I had a summary, but I'm not going to use it because I, I read something this morning that's very interesting. I was, watch, I was reading about an organization, a technical organization, technology org, top technology corporation. The executives were together, and you named the organization, they were there. And they were talking about that technology cannot, cannot exist without an innovation. And here's what they said. And innovation, innovation, ideas, for new things, to solve new problems, cannot exist, listen to this, without diversity, without inclusion, without equality. They said that. They said that. That when somebody comes with a different culture, with different ideas, from a different thinking, what they bring is ideas to solve problems. And that's what we have to do. We have to solve our problems. We have many problems. And we can't continue to solve our problems, newer problems, with old ideas. I'm Lou Scott. This is the Geppetto Room. We don't have to be creative to be creative. You just have to be you. Until next time. <laughs>